I've been saying this, and, and I was, you know, treated like I was a freaking leper or something, or a tax collector, because I've been screaming this for years now. Let's listen to what Pastor Tom Hughes says. That's Jerusalem and the people, the Jewish people, and to put an end to transgression, an end to sin. This is where it's all going. The door is closing on the Gentile world, folks, and God appears to be isolating Israel right now. Listen, we go through these things much longer. We know that America is not a player in the last day's prophecies, and it looks like America is not going to be able to come to Israel's rescue pretty soon. You wonder how that was going to happen? I still am hoping for a rapture, but as I look at all of these different things taking place, folks, we have a lot uh, of, there's a lot of Bible prophecy to help give us the uh, instruction for the direction everything is going to go so we can tell, so we can be well prepared. Let's look at the next thing. Um, there would be hatred against God and his people. It would increase as birth pains upon a pregnant woman. The next thing I want to talk about is deceit. When Jesus was asked in the Olivet Discourse uh, by his disciples, what is the sign of your coming at the end of the age? The very first sign he gave them was deception. Don't be deceived. In fact, let me read it to you. Matthew chapter 24 says this. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to Jesus privately saying, Tell us when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Uh, I am the Christ, I am the way. Go this way, not the way of the gospel, not the way of this book. Listen. We've already gotten to the place of deceit. Churches are out there saying, don't teach the Old Testament. Churches and pastors are out there saying, don't you dare go into Bible prophecy. You would think that right now, more pastors would be saying, man, I better pay attention to Bible prophecy more than I ever have before. But that is exactly the opposite of what is happening. I want you to think of this when it comes to this sign that Jesus said about deceit. The big, uh, the big deceit. Uh, the increase of deceit of the last days. A good salesman will create a crisis in order to sell them the solution. The crisis, if you're a car salesman, is, uh-oh, you've got to have a new car. Look at your car. It's falling apart. Oh, it's going to cost you more for repairs. You've got to do this to your used car. You've got to do that to your used car. And then you start looking at the map. They put the map together for you and think, wow, I can have a brand new car for less than the crisis that that old car is going to cost me. And look, and it's brand new. It has a new car smell. This is wonderful. And I can have it right now and get rid of that crisis of my old car. Listen, in the grand scheme of things, I believe that is what we are watching right now. There's a crisis that has been created. And in that crisis, we are going to be sold the solution. Right now we're hearing about vaccines and various things. Um, but I want to get into this. So basically, the point of that is he is, I've been saying that I've been hearing pastors saying that they don't understand why pa other pastors are not on fire behind the pulpit. Why are there so many pastors keeping their mouth shut about the obvious signs of the times? Are they the deceivers because they're not warning the people? God gave me Ezekiel 33 randomly because our church didn't teach the Old Testament. So I wasn't very familiar with the Old Testament. I'm just out of the blue. And when I was in the kitchen washing dishes or whatever, he gave me Ezekiel 33. And that's where it's talking about setting up a watchman.